Today is the uh, 13th of February, 2013. We're at the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs, New York. Uh, my name is Wayne Clark. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and date and place of birth, please? Henry Tonight Baker uh, was born in, actually in Utica, grew up in Johnstown, New York. And did you attend school in Johnstown? Yes. The date of birth was October 5th, 1924. All right. Did you graduate from high school? I graduated from Johnstown High School. I attended Yale University for freshman year and on a full scholarship. Mm -hmm. I left at the end of the year to join the service, volunteer for the draft. And, uh, with a guarantee that my scholarship would be there when I return. Mm -hmm. So you ended up uh, going into the service um, April of 1943. Right. And where did you go for your basic training? Uh, well, we went to Camp Upton, and then I was sent to the Air Corps in mm -hmm. Atlantic City. Uh huh. Got my basic in Atlantic City. Then they came up with the Army Specialized Training Program. Okay. And which I declined to join, but which they sent me anyway. Uh huh. And uh, when I finally the far the uh, world realized the country realized that that was a not a sensible program uh, to. In it, you had to have a year of college if you were white. If you were black, you had to have a college degree. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, we had a, a group of 300 men with 30 very, very bright black boys. Mm -hmm. And it was a great experience that way because I learned bridge from a tech sergeant in that group. Now, how long were you in that program? That was just a matter of a few months. About it by maybe one term of college, mm -hmm. and then of course, now, now whereabouts was that? That was uh, we were stationed in Brooklyn. We went to Brooklyn Poly. Okay. And that uh, that broke up because it wasn't producing anything really mm -hmm. worthwhile. To somebody already had college and need to repeat and so forth. I see. And so then we went from there to the infantry. We left uh, Brooklyn for maneuvers in Louisiana for the 75th infantry. Mm -hmm. and and what, what was that like? <laughs> it was quite a jolt. Steam heated apartments to the wilds of Louisiana. Uh -huh. it, was, it was a great awakening, but it. Uh, now, what time of year was that? That was in the. In the spring. In the spring. spring. Okay. And, so uh, it was all outside uh, training. Oh yes, yes. Uh -huh. it, was all, it was all combat maneuvers. Yep. And of course, we're coming in pretty well out of condition. But we we caught up finally. Mm -hmm. And we went from the maneuvers of Louisiana to Camp Breckenridge, Kentucky, uh -huh. for our advanced training before we went overseas. Well, we were there through the summer of, what, 43? 44. Through the summer of 44, we were at Camp Breckenridge. Okay. And then we left in the fall for uh, Europe. Now, how did you get over there? Uh, we went on a very large ship. That, mm -hmm. uh, well, we didn't go on a convoy. We went uh, by ourselves, but just picked up escorts here and there on the way over. Now the whole division the whole went? The division went on one ship. Okay, wow. And that was on the Ojo mm -hmm. That came into Swansea, Wales. And then we trained at Camp Angle in Wales for until these, well, late November. Uh huh. And then we were sent into Europe to uh, we were originally scheduled for occupation, the division line, but with the uh, balls, they had to have combat troops, so we got converted to 
a combat infantry. I see. And you ended up in the Battle of the Bulge. Yeah, we ended up in the cleanup of the Bulge. Yeah. Okay. Well, before we get to that, uh, when did you first uh, uh, get involved with combat? Well, it was then. Oh, that, that was the first yeah, time, first okay. Manhattan, Belgium, and that was our first online experience. Mm -hmm. Now, what about what about your clothing and equipment? Was it adequate at that point? No, we we were still in snowshoes. We were still in overshoes. We didn't get boot packs until well into the combat, and consequently, we all had frozen feet. Oh, gee. Problems, but, uh, mm -hmm. And I still, my wife said, my feet still smell from that day. But, uh, uh, no, we, uh, we did get combat boots finally. And mm -hmm. then, lived, of course, we were in, that was snow, there was a good foot of snow to throw on the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and that was uh, your first contact with the German army? Yeah, was there at Manhattan. And then, we moved to... Uh, how, how long were you on the line for? Uh, we, at the, well, we pretty well stayed on the line for most of the rest of the time. The only time we'd be off of it, they would move us to another sector. Because mm -hmm. uh, we went in at uh, Grand Hole, Belgium, where we got our first real time. Mm -hmm. You want to tell us about that? Well, we relieved the 82nd Airborne in Grand Hello. And that's uh, when we got our first, first really, really heavy combat. Go, go ahead and continue. <laughs> Grand Hello, we continued on through Belgium, and we were actually we were closing up the bulge, our main objective. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, uh, go ahead, continue. Well, I just, I just think closing the bulge was our main objective through uh -huh. there. And then we got switched from there, they moved us into uh, the Netherlands, into, uh, on the Moss River. Mm -hmm. And we uh, did a lot of combat patrols across the Moss. Mm -hmm. And we were moved later to southern France around. Nancy and the, there was a fortified city there that we took and so we suffered our heaviest, the company's heaviest losses were in southern France. Okay. And that was in February of 45. Now, now was, was most of those losses uh, direct combat or from artillery barrages? Uh, both. Both. Uh, the worst day was from artillery barrages because we were the reserve company mm -hmm. and we got really blown away. Mm -hmm. Now I understand you were wounded? No, I was never wounded. I, uh, you, uh, I was one of two men of the original company that never, never left the line. Okay, but it says here, oh okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see no shrapnel. But you did have a knee injury? Yeah, I, I got hit with a, a piece of flat shrapnel on my knee. Uh-huh. Knocked me down. I was 240 pounds at the time. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but uh, it didn't break, you know, it didn't break skin uh -huh. or break anything. And of course, at 20 years old, you uh, you want to, you just keep going, you know. Sure. You don't pay attention to it. But, that was uh, that was the only. As my uh, company commander was wounded and came back from the hospital, and saw I was still there, mm -hmm. he explained to the guy with him. He said, "Well, they look over, 
see Baker with somebody and they say, get the little guy next to him, we can get him any time. <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason you survive. You know? <laughs> that might be true, I don't know. Now, uh, how often did you get a, a shower or a change of clothes? Oh, rarely, rarely. We, uh, we told we would get some clothes changes, but, uh -huh. but uh, a shower was very rare. And what about how, hot chow? How often did you get that? I, and then our, our company kitchen was great. They got up the line on a lot of nights when other companies didn't get up. Mm -hmm. They they took an excellent job. I mean, our company kitchen was very unusual. Mm -hmm. And we got probably as many meals as anybody on the line. And they really made an effort to get up every night if they possibly could. Mm -hmm. Of course, there were certain times they couldn't. But, mm -hmm. but on the whole, they did a great job. And how were you? How were you treated by the civilian population? Uh, Did you have much contact with? And not in, and not in Germany particularly, because they were working in pretty well bombed out, shell mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. we, uh, you know, lots of uh, uh, well, the bulge had come through that way, and now it was going back, and to, there weren't many civilians for us to. Mm -hmm. uh, to contact okay. in, in Germany. In Holland, the civilians were fantastic. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we didn't have any uh, real problems with civilians until toward the end of the war. Mm -hmm. So you were in Germany when the war ended? Yeah, we went back from southern France, we went back to uh, the Rhine River. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we uh, through patrols, we set up uh, a uh, cable for a bridge across the Rhine in the final attack into the river of Baca. And then we followed across and our job then was to clean out the river of Baca. Mm -hmm. it, it was enclosed and we had some pretty heavy fighting through there. So, so we, uh, a, a lot of casualties? Uh, well, we suffered, as I say, of 180 men originally. There were two of us that the word never, never went off the line. Uh -huh. uh, replacements came and, and were hit and gone before you knew their names, which mm -hmm. was extremely difficult. And of course, you know, there were friends that you lost. Sure. In our first real combat, I lost my two closest friends. One was killed and one was crippled for life. Mm. But, uh, now, where did you meet them through through yeah, training? In the, in the, in the, we met okay. in Louisiana. Okay. There were other other ASDP units. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when you were on the Rhine, did you did you meet the Russians at all? No, no. We uh, never got that in any contact with them. Okay. What about uh, concentration camps? Did you see we, any of those? We, uh, we liberated a labor camp at one area we were in, which, uh, of course, it was toward the end, and mm -hmm. they were just working these people and not feeding them. And we, uh, I can't recall the name of the town, but we liberated that camp, and uh, we went in and, and told them that they had absolute run of the town. Yep. And what? Well, People that were able to just went out and sort of got even. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, that was just one day and then we moved on from there. So. Now what about uh, like German prisoners? Did you capture any Germans? We, had, uh, we took a lot of prisoners. Mm -hmm. And uh, in most cases, if there were regular army, well, it was normal, of course, if you took SS prisoners, then you had to be extremely careful. Mm -hmm. But they would, they would have no honor. Mean, they would give up their life to take an American life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, for that. But uh, most of the prisoners we took, toward the end especially, were, were older men that had 
no more desire to be there than we did. Uh -huh. and, uh, so we didn't have any problems with them at all. Now, when, when the war ended, did you do any um, occupation duty? Yes, we, uh, our division was assigned to, to uh, Camp Breckenridge, uh, Camp uh, Brooklyn, which was a uh, redeployment camp. And whereabouts was that? That was just outside of Reims, very okay. close to Reims, France. And uh, we ran that camp until our point count came up and we could leave. Okay. How, how were you point, point wise? Uh, I had too many to go direct to the Pacific and not enough to go home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, now once, the, once the war ended, uh, <laughs> was there a lot of celebration? Oh yeah, well, we, uh, this other fellow and I that were, as I say, uh, the only two that went all the way. Yep. We drew for two furloughs. They had, the company had two furloughs, one to the States and one to England. It, it was just before the end of the war. And luckily I drew the one to England rather than the one to the States. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, we were coming back from that uh, on VD, VJ, uh, BD, v, oh, VD Day. Victory o over Japan v, or v, v, e. V, e day. <laughs> Victory in Europe. Okay. We were on the channel coming back to France on that when that oh. happened. Okay. So they sent us into Paris for three days extra leave. And wow. That was a celebration. Uh huh. That was wild. That I, was. I can imagine. And I suppose there were a lot of rumors that you guys would end up in Japan too, right? Oh yeah. Well, the short. Short Point guys did. They, yeah. They were sent on. That's the redeployment camp. But we're sending lot, most of those troops straight into Japan. Mm. Straight into that theater. Okay. Now, w when the uh, war ended with Japan, which was in August of '45, were you still in Europe? Well, or no, I was. I was. I was discharged on New Year's Eve of '45. Uh, Okay. When did you head back to the States from uh, Europe? It was in the fall of 45. Okay. okay. And uh, we uh, went to some ACAC outfit to come home with. Mm -hmm. And we came, we had a bad storm out of La Harve, and we got pushed almost into Spain, but we limp, limped into Boston on a Liberty ship. Did you get seasick at all? I didn't know, but the crew was even seasick. No. <laughs> Another guy and I just started eating him, but that, we found that was a solution to seasick. Ah. Of course, that's my solution to most everything. <laughs> but, uh, uh, we limped into Boston. Yep. And uh, so we were in Camp Miles Standish. On Christmas Day, we landed there. And, uh, <laughs> that was a. A really emotional day. I mean, to land on Christmas. Sure. And I got a phone call into my mother, which uh, I'm sure was one of the best Christmas presents she ever got. Yep. But, uh, and we had our choice of going home for a furlough or being discharged. And mm -hmm. I chose to get out, so we went to Fort Dix and we were, as I say, we were discharged on. Uh, Years yep, ago. I see that. So you got discharged. Uh, they uh, gave you your your mustering out pay, and uh, I I assume you got on a train and headed for home. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Back of the discharge, it says convenience of the government. Uh huh. <laughs> really appreciated that. <laughs> but yeah, that was it. So you, you got home, and uh, what did you do when you first got home? Uh, well, immediately I went downtown and joined some old friends, but mm -hmm. uh, for a long run, I immediately reapplied to, to Yale, mm -hmm. and that... Uh, uh, Through the GI Bill? Spring, well, I still had my scholarship. Oh, okay. That spring semester, I went back to Yale. 
and uh, they, uh, they asked me to use the GI Bill and free up the scholarship, which I did. Mm -hmm. But they continued to give me a job for my room and board. So I went through and I'm mm -hmm. a graduator. From what year did you graduate? 48. 48. And what, what did you get your degree in? I got a degree in civil engineering, which I had never used. Ah. I came home and uh, met a young girl and, uh, oh. who was tied to her father. Her father was a widower and ran uh -huh. a grocery store. And so my mother was a widow and running a business in Johnstown. So we both felt obligated to take care of that. Yep. So we uh, married and uh, I worked in the bank for a while and then we took over to the grocery store and ran it for 37 years. Oh. Uh, when did you retire? 1987. Uh-huh. Spring of 1987. And what have you been doing since you retired? Uh, well, I've always had a lot, of, I've always enjoyed volunteer work. I, uh, while we had the store, we established uh, two group homes for children with problems and, mm -hmm. uh, and you know in their lives and we ran that through the 1970s we ran it for 30 some years until the state decided that the money was better spent somewhere else which was still of course totally ridiculous and, uh, mm -hmm. right toward the end of the war i had four replacements come in, uh -huh. young kids, 18-year-old kids, and they were amazing, and they, just very unusual bunch of kids, and when I, after work, working with them and having them in my platoon, I, uh, I always felt that the youth of this country is what it's built on, mm -hmm. and so all volunteer work I've done since then, uh, it's been directed to our youth. I see. I uh, had uh, served on the Samaritan Counseling Center. Uh, the uh, Family Counseling Center. For, and then for 10 years, I was uh, a, co a court appointed special advocate for foster children. Oh. So I kept involved in between the church and, mm -hmm. and work for uh, young people especially. Um, let me just go back uh, to World War II again. Did you get to see any USO shows at all? <laughs> the only USO we saw was on the Rhine River. Uh -huh. And uh, this group came and they set up their coffee thing and all that. Uh, we're going through the line getting donuts and coffee. And one of the people asked, well, just how far away are the Germans? And the idiot, the ad, said, well, they're just across that river. And that was the last we saw of our donuts. <laughs> <laughs> they packed up and <laughs> they packed left. Up and went. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, but, uh, no, that was uh, the closest. We got to a USO show. Okay. Did you get to fly, do any flying at all? No. No? Okay. And uh, you just got to spend three days in Paris? Yeah, right after okay. the war, right at the end of the war. Now, was Paris your favorite city over there? Or? Oh, well, it has to be. You know? uh -huh. We've been <laughs> back since then. Oh, you have? We, go, we went back in uh, 79, and we, I, we ran the route that the division went. I went back on I mean, that first day out of Grand Hello. Mm -hmm. uh, our third spot was hit with a chung gun to fire, and I said I lost my two closest friends. Yeah. But we went back to Grand Hello. and actually saw the building they were shot from it was still there. Mm -hmm. So we uh, retraced that route through there. Again. Uh -huh. Traveling, and, you know. So. Now, when you were discharged, did you uh, join any veterans 
No. Groups? Oh, well, I'm BFW, I okay. join, but I haven't been active yet. Okay. Did you, uh, did you go to any uh, division reunions at all? I kept looking for them, but never was when I could make it or okay. coffee. I, this one friend of mine that was crippled, yep. our friendship stayed until he died in 2005. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you stayed in touch with anyone yeah, you served with. We stayed very, very close. We, he was in Detroit, but we got together often, and, mm -hmm. and our families sort of grew up knowing each other. You know, mm -hmm. I still correspond with his daughter, and uh, uh, that was a terrific experience. Mm -hmm. How do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? Uh, well, it certainly probably aged me. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think, uh, you grow up that. Yeah. And I think just the experience of, uh, I think, seeing those young kids inspired me to work with children. Mm -hmm. And um, as I often said, the hardest thing for me when I came home was to understand why I came home somebody else said. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, I have two children mm -hmm. and five grandchildren that I realize now that was why I was there. Mm -hmm. But that was a tough battle for a long time to uh, understand why Larry Brown was killed and I wasn't. Yeah. Standing next to each other, you know, it, uh, mm -hmm. that was extremely, extremely hard. For me, but. Okay. Now I, I understand you've got some photographs. Oh, I, my daughter's collected them all over. Okay. Yeah, you want. Me. Yeah, if you want to bring them over, and uh, he, he can, I can, I should be able to zoom in on them with the camera. Uh, you want to see what you want first, or no? Um. All right, let me just uh, stop this for a second. That uh, first photograph, that's that's you? That's me. Was that taken in uh, basic training? No, I think it was taken on one of the few furloughs I got home. Okay. Was... All right. Uh, this, was, this was definitely taken at home. Probably at the same time that was. All right, got it. How do these are? These are just general combat pictures, so you probably have a million of. Oh, that we can never have too many pictures. <laughs> okay, and it's hard for me to to see. Is was that taken during the uh, bulge? No, during the bulge. Oh, okay. All these will be right. Yeah. Okay. Like this one says, "This one said in your book going into Belgium." In the okay. Again. All right. Okay. I'm getting a uh, little bit of a glare, but there's nothing we can really oh, do about. Man. Show some of the snow. Oh, yeah. Okay, can you just tilt that towards me? Yeah, okay, that that uh, gets rid of the glare. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a great shot. Okay. Yep, that, that, that's good. Wow, okay. <laughs> All right, got it. This one maybe makes right. This is just a conglomeration of the route the division took and my uh, award to whatever. Okay, now I, I see you got the bronze star. Did you get that for saving that fellow's life? No. Uh, 
I got that at, in southern in, in France on the day we were, took our heavy bombardment in, in uh, helping with the wounded. Okay. And I got it for that. Yeah. Well, it's kind of glad I got it for helping rather than killing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, got it. That's a newspaper account of the... Of getting the brown Yes, you can hold that up. That's just a newspaper out of the PSG. It's just a local paper's account of the Okay. Of the award. All right. Okay. You don't want his jacket. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, with the, oh, with the jacket. It doesn't have the. I know, but he still wants the jacket. Have the, uh, the proudest thing we are of, of course, is. The well, let me let me ask you this. Can you can you still fit in the jacket? <laughs> uh, I think I can now. I don't know. You couldn't, in between, you couldn't. <laughs> there was a period in between when I couldn't even get a get it on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> this patch is the outfit we came home with. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you what that patch was. Yeah. And then your your ribbons and uh, your combat infantry badge. You. They put in, in the frame. Yeah. Okay. So they made you a staff sergeant. Yeah, yeah. And I jumped from PFC to staff. Well, that was pretty good uh, was, in the infantry. Yeah, that was uh, our original platoon sergeant was wounded when he came back from the hospital. Uh huh. He, uh, he, he came out to see me right away because we were. I took over the platoon mostly while he was gone as a mm -hmm. PFC. And uh, he said, I got you a little, little boost in pay from PFC to staff. <laughs> that was, uh, and you, you, probably had, you probably had the most experience of, uh, you know, of the group. I, said, you know, I, was in, I was there longer. Than, uh, now, the guys you served with, uh, I take it they were from all over the country? All over. Did you have a lot of Southerners in the unit too? Uh, quite a few. <coughs> quite a few. Uh -huh. we, uh, we didn't have any black. Mm -hmm. which, uh, oh, we got to put them in At that time was the way it was. And, uh, but uh, they were different. Mm -hmm. That was one good thing about ASTP was the mixing of the, of the colors because I think the Southern boys they came into ASP, ASTP, left with a lot, a lot of different attitude toward, toward uh -huh. life. And they came in, and of course, they pretty well had to. Yeah. The black boys were all college graduates. They were smarter. They were all ranked. Mm -hmm. you know, they'd been in the Army. They were all tech sergeants. You know, yeah. And, uh, this one tech sergeant taught me bridge while I was there. Oh. I've been forever grateful to him. Oh. <laughs> so you're a bridge player too, huh? Yeah, game tonight. Oh. Yeah. Now, something I didn't ask you, I forgot. Uh, do you recall where you were and what you were doing when uh, you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? No, I don't. Okay. I don't. And going back even further, um, I usually ask, do you remember where you were and what you were doing when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? You know, well, that was, we were still in the, let's see, that was, uh, this, let's see, that was December of 41. 41, because I was still home. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that was the day, you know, I think my mother and I had taken a ride up to speculate. Uh -huh. That's what you told me. Huh? You told me that. And uh, coming back, we got it on the radio. Mm -hmm. It was now, unbelievable. 
Now, did you notice uh, after that, did, did your life change? I mean, with the rationing and, you know, all oh, of a sudden yeah, where we were yeah. at war? Yeah, my mother spent the war using her meat coupons for her cats. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> but, huh. no, but, uh, no, it did, it, like, it certainly was. Mm -hmm. And I think just your attitude toward it. Sure. Like, Everybody was behind the oh, yeah. the was, soldier. And, oh, yes. It was, yeah. That was, of course, the big advantage we had. Mm -hmm. We came home and we, uh, we were greeted with open arms. Mm -hmm. These poor kids coming out of Afghanistan or, you know, coming home to a uh, pretty decent greeting now, finally, yeah. but. Uh, uh, it was, I mean, it just seemed so brutal to mm. the way they were treated, especially the Iraqi veterans. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, is there anything else you'd like to mention in closing? I don't know. <laughs> was, uh, well, this is Ed Snyder, who was crippled. Mm -hmm said to me one day that uh, I don't regret one minute of the time I've spent in the service. Mm -hmm. And if he can say that, went through life never being able to walk on his own fully. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think I've got a complaint in the world. Uh, that was the attitude of of that generation, mm -hmm. the tw our 20 year old kids that grew up very fast. Sure. And, and, uh, I think that uh, he kind of summed up the whole thing. So, uh, I, can't, I can't complain. It's, it's an experience uh, to have lived through it. Uh, certainly uh, gives you a perspective on life. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for your interview. Okay.